This is Intercom, built in Ember. Today, we're gonna extract a very small piece of it into an Ember CLI add-on. Um, specifically, this search box here, if I type in some text on the debounce, it filters a user list. Um, but also, if you put in some white space, that doesn't trigger the search operation, only when you then put in actual characters. Um, it's a very small thing, but uh, this is a technique that we use throughout Intercom. So let's build a simple Ember add-on. I'm going to use the Ember add-on key command. Um, this add-on is going to be called Ember Computed Filter. So that takes a couple of minutes to install all the NPM dependencies. Um, but once we have it, uh, we get the skeleton project and we can run this application with the ember serve command. So this will open it up on localhost on port 4200. And we get a little uh, dummy ember app. This ember computed filter add-on in test is a little dummy Ember application where we can uh, we can build things or we can build where we can build a prototype. So first of all, I'm going to demonstrate uh, what the problem we're trying to solve is. Okay. So let's say we have uh, someone's name or we have an input let's say we have an input of someone's name okay and we also want to output let's say uh, the trimmed name so we'll remove all white space from this uh, and we'll just say trimmed name okay so we're in the application template here I'll create an application controller Okay, and we'll have a default name and we have this computer property called trimmed name which is simply going to trim the value of name so it will return this dot get name dot trim and this is a computer property with a dependency on name so this should load here we should see this updates as we type um what i'll do is put this in a pre-tag so we can actually see the spaces um trimmed and i'll also wrap it in square brackets so we can really see that So we should be able to see when this reloads now that as I type, you don't see the spaces. Um, just to reinforce that, I'll also put a I'll output the actual name value as well that's not trimmed. Okay, we don't need the outlet. So this time you'll see that we have the name, we have the trimmed version. If I put in spaces, you can see it happens in the first one and it's only when I put in some more text do you see those appear in the second one. Um, I think these don't need be yours. Okay. So now what if we want to um, observe this trimmed name and maybe trigger an Ajax request or something like that on it changing. Uh, one way we can demonstrate this is we'll have a last updated computer property uh, on both name. So this will be a property on name and 
and it will simply return date.now, let's say. Uh, so if I can, I'll put this under here and last updated. Okay, that's not correct. Uh, data updated. Okay, I spelled that wrong. So we have a last updated computer property, and it should. So what we should see is is a number, and that will increase as we type, um, representing the the current time. And I'm going to do the exact same for uh, trimmed name. trim name last updated and this is has a, a dependency on trimmed name and I will also output this here uh, it's called trimmed name last updated So what we see, this updates at the same time, even though the actual prop, the value of trimmed is not updating, it's last updated uh, is triggered. And the reason for that is that um, even though the value that's being returned here, every time we put a new white, uh, new blank character on name, um, this computer property is invalidated. It's uh, then its value is evaluated and returned, but even though it's the same value being returned each time, uh, it's still the computer property has been invalidated. So if we were to have an observer on trimmed name, and let's also do that. Um, so uh, we have last updated, we will have um, count. Uh, let's see, we will have, let's say, a count of zero, uh, trimmed count zero as well uh, so on name change let's say this will be an observer which will observes name so we'll increment count so we'd expect that every time we make a change to name that this will update um, I'm going to remove move some of these down so they're you know, logically grouped. So now we have name, count, last updated, and the observer. Here we have the trimmed name, the count, the last updated, and then the on name change. So this will be on trimmed change. How about? And this will be trimmed, last updated. And this is just trimmed. Let's make these consistent on trim change so this is going to be trimmed and this will be trimmed count so we're going to increment that so I've renamed some of those things so this is going to be trimmed uh, last updated this is trimmed last updated we'll show so there's the input there's our last updated we we'll also put a count here This will be count. And this time, this is trimmed count. So hopefully, I spelt all those correctly, and you'll see that I think I got this count wrong. Okay, trimmed count. So we're incrementing this on trimmed. Okay, so that would never run. So what we expect here is both these numbers to go up each time. Um, I think I've got the last updated wrong as well. Let me fix that. So this is now trimmed. Okay, so now, now we should see <clears throat> every time we update the name, the last updated will update for both. The count will update. Even if I put in uh, white space and this trimmed value is that's been output isn't updating uh, correctly, but the uh, 
both the count and the date do update. So what we'd like to do is build something which actually uh, doesn't um, doesn't update last updated or count unless the actual outputted value of trimmed uh, changes. So really what we want is something like this. Um, so trimmed instead of this, we're going to create a computer property. So it would be something like this trimmed and I'm going to call this computed filter. So it will take a key, the same key that we pass in here. So it depends on name and it's then going to take a function which will pass in the value of whatever name was. And uh, it, within this function, we can do whatever we want to filter the value. So it'll be something like return uh, value dot trim. So uh, we obviously haven't built this yet, so this isn't going to work. But if we did, um, we'd expect any time we uh, any computer property that's based on trimmed new will only be updated if this value actually changes, or if we observe trimmed new that that observer will only fire if the actual value of this function changes. So I'll comment that out and we'll come back to that. Uh, this is an add-on, so uh, it's very easy to test drive uh, or to write tests in the add-on. So we'll, we'll start by doing that. Um, so let's see, I'll start with some unit tests. This is gonna be for computed filter tests. Test, I think. Okay, and we're gonna need a few things. Ember. Um, I'll just set this up first, so um, just to check that everything is working. Universe works. <clears throat> okay. So we'd expect that to fail for a start. So the nice thing about Ember CLI is it also runs the tests at the same time as the application. So just go to slash tests. We should see a failing test here. Um, we'll also hide the container and JS hint. So there's our failing test, which is good. And this should then pass. Which it does. So. Uh, our computer property is going to live in this add-on folder. So I'll create that now, computed filter. And uh, like the test, we're going to need ember. It's going to return a function. Okay, so there is our function. And now we can start testing it. So let's give this a module name. This is going to be computed filter and the first thing we want to test um, <clears throat> well this computer property is going to filter values so I think we, we can start with the filtering it's going to uh, that's going to be pretty easy so let's say test um, uh, it applies a filter Okay, so uh, I'm going to create a, a class here. Um, stand. So this hippo will have a name. Uh, it will also have a um, trimmed name. And this is going to use uh, <clears throat> our computed filter, um, which I need to uh, import. So import computed filter from, so this is going to be ember computed filter. So this is the, importing this file here, which doesn't do much at the moment. But now we can say computed filter. Uh, what do we want to pass in? We want to pass in that it's dependent key is a name. 
and we want to give it a, a function which will apply the filter and for now let's just return this function takes a value and we'll just return the value straight so um, uh, this is obviously gonna f well we haven't tested anything here uh, let's create a hippo okay and we'll give it a name so we expect the hippo dot trimmed name so we expect the hippo uh, trimmed name property to equal Sarah here okay and this is obviously going to fail to anything within this function yet computed filter okay computed filter okay I misspelled filter there okay so that builds and uh, this is a failure because this isn't a computer property at the moment it returns nothing so what we do want to return is a computed property um, so this computer property well let's talk about okay so it is it, it's going to be an empty computer property for now we'll just return to do uh, this function it's going to take two parameters one is going to be the dependent dependent key and the other is going to be the filter function that we're going to apply on the value so this should give us to do which it does so really what we want to do is the minimum viable computer property i guess so we can just uh see we can we can return em.get this uh, dependent key so this will in effect just return as if this was just a computer property or an alias dependent key okay spelled wrong So let's add a second test to this now. Hippo set name to be Gavin. We expect trimmed name to be Gavin. And this is going to fail. No, this is going to pass. I think this will pass. Um, okay, yes. So this is failing because. Um, this computer property has no dependent keys it's basically just uh it's like a, a cached value um we can pass in the dependent key here so if we pass dependent so this should make the test pass okay so um it's now behaving like a computer property um now if i set the name Alex with some white space around it and um, we'll expect the value that's returned to be Alex uh, reason for this is well actually sorry that would not work I have to trim the value here so this should now apply this trim uh, function on the value and return that I think all because we're not doing anything with the filter here so uh, we could simply wrap this in the filter and this should actually it will uh, run that function on the value so it does pass I guess that's the first um, bit of functionality for this computer property and um, the second thing is I guess we want to uh, assert that the observers uh, any observers on this computer property only get fired when there's a significant change observers are fired on significant change so like above we will create a hippo and we'll assert that it 
we'll assert that it has the right name. What we'll do is create an observer. So hippo that add observer and we'll observe trimmed name. And each time that changes, we will increment observer count. All right, so the hippo's name is currently Sarah. So if we're to set the name uh, to the same value that it has, uh, we would expect the observer count to still be zero because uh, this does not significantly change. Put in the description for this um, the observer does not fire when the value does not change. Okay, so let's do something similar, but we will assert that the observer does not fire when uh, the value does not does not change significantly. So with this computer property, uh, one of the things we wanted not to do is to fire observers when this value changes. So we're gonna need to actually do a bit of work to implement uh, this computer property here. I mean, really what we want is on first run, we wanna set up an internal observer on the dependent key. And uh, each time it changes, the dependent key changes, um, compare the new and old and previous filtered values. The reason we wanna set up an internal observer is uh, because by default, Ember will recompute this every time the dependent key changes. Um, irregardless of the value actually changing or not, it'll notify a property change. So we want that not to happen. So we're gonna remove this uh, dependent key from the, the computer property and we're gonna manage this stuff ourselves. In the context of this computed function, this equals the object that has the computer property. So in our case, uh, or our test case, that's the hippo, or the instance of the hippo. So uh, we can use the meta values on that hippo as a place to store this bookkeeping data. So uh, we kind of want to go, if this is the first run, and we can check that by going if em.getMeta, uh, pass in this, and let's say has observer, so um, this is gonna return false uh, the first time it's run because we haven't set something up. So uh, this allows us now to have a path that only gets run uh, once when this computer property is invoked for the first time. So uh, what we're gonna do then is get the value and we can do that by uh, as before em.get this Dependent, dependent key. So that will return what the filtered value is. Um, we're now gonna set some stuff uh, on the meta. So set meta and we'll set, uh, we'll set that it has an observer to be true. And that will stop this from running the next time that this computer property is evaluated. Uh, we'll also set meta on the last value to be this current value here. Okay, because again, this is the first time we're running, so uh, we now have that stored. Uh, then we will create an observer on the dependent key, which in our case would be something like, uh, in this case, it's its name. So we're saying, let's observe any time name changes and we will run this function. 
And within that, in, in this function now, and this will only happen when name changes, we're going to run our filter against the current value of name and then compare it to the previous one. And only if they've changed will we actually trigger a property change. So um, the new value will be uh, like this. We're going to filter Uh, filter the value of the dependent key so that will be space space alex for example and we'll filter it um, we will get the last value and that's going to be uh, em dot get get meta on the last value here get meta last value um, and if they're different if last value new value is not equivalent to last value um, we want to then uh, set the old value so this last value to the new value so it'll be set meta last value new value so we store that for next time and then we want to notify property change on the key that's passed in so this key being trimmed name in this case so that's letting any observers know that this value is actually changed now um so to recap this is run on uh first evaluation it's computer property um we set uh we do some internal bookkeeping we create an observer on the pendant key because we're no longer using the default computer property uh, observer here um, we now at this point we now have the value so we're going to return that so we need an else clause so this is if uh, we haven't set up the observer so in this case uh, we have set up the observer so really what we want to do is get this uh, last value and return it return it um, so this will be return em dot get meta this and underscore last value. So this pass and it does, which is cool. Um, so it does not fire when the value does not change significantly. Cool. Um, our next test is it should change on significant change. So hippo set name is Gavin, let's say. And then we'd expect this to be one. Uh, the observer uh, does fire when the value changes value changes significantly cool uh, passes as well um, so I think there's a couple of areas that we can improve on this uh, just in refactoring some of the keys are duplicated um, so let's do that we don't need these comments anymore so um this has observer so we'll call this far has observer key and we'll equal this okay and we'll do the same for last value key last value key is this guy Last value key. And just verify that they all pass. I think because our observer keys and last keys are just strings and we're setting them on this, which is going to be the hippo, uh, this would not work if we had multiple. Uh, filtered computer properties. So if I was to add, for example, a um, 
a second one and we call it um, trim to name two maybe uh, we should be able to assert that in this case if we were to set um, okay so we create one with Sarah we set it we trim change the name to Gavin we get the trimmed name if we were to do this on trimmed two for both of these they should be updated as well so I think this is going to fail because we're yeah so this is because trimmed name two is good well it's tr it's failing because both of these are using the same uh, keys so really what we want to do is to add the key as a namespace here so the key in this case is going to be the name here trimmed name trimmed name two so by using these here it namespaces them. So we, we possibly may have other computer properties that use techniques like this. So I think what we should do is um, namespace these. So uh, it will be the computer filter, um, the key, and then uh, has observer, I think. So like that and format this is going to take uh, well this is static so we can just pass in computed filter let's make it kind of private and um, this will take the key and this will be observer so it's just going to be like that and it's going to be same for last value key which is going to be computed filter and this will be last value. So uh, this should all pass, which it does, great. Um, so let's see, is there anything else? We could probably make this a little better by uh, creating variables at the top for some of these things, uh, em get get meta set meta okay so we can get rid of these em get em set meta em get get meta set meta get meta okay and just verify that they pass okay and um, this not is not very nice I think it's probably nicer to say if it has observer key um, well actually you can do better than that let's see maybe the way it was um, var is first run maybe is equal to that that's a little better okay so it passes great so let's start using this now in our test application so in our dummy controller uh, we can now import this import computed filter from remember computed filter computed filter all right so this trimmed guy uh, we're going to replace them here with this and it's going to be computed f filter and we don't need that anymore so Hopefully this will just work. Uh, no, I may have spelled something wrong again. Computed filter, ember, computed filter. Okay. 
So now, uh, okay, nothing's updated. <laughs> so obviously something's wrong here. Oh, this is called trim new. This should be called trimmed. Oh, cool, it works. So you can see um, the observe this count isn't updating unless we put in some characters. Um, also trimmed isn't updating as before and the last updated isn't updating either. Um, so that's, that's kind of fully functional now, I think. Um, uh, so this now replaces this old function here. So we simply have a computed filter. Um, we could add like a word count which is going to be a computed filter on trimmed. And again, it will take a value. So in this case, it's going to be the trimmed value that's passed in here. And what we want to do is um, count the words, which is going to be, how do we do that? Let's find out. Something like this, I think. So we want to return value dot. Uh, we split on uh, white space and we get the length. So now if we output the word count, this has now got a word count of one. And you see if I put spaces in, it's still one. And now it goes up to two. Um, the nice thing about this, again, is that if we put in a uh, word count last updated, turn, and this will be a computer property based on the word count. And as before, that is only going to update when uh, word count date updated. That will only update when the word count actually updates itself. So it's it's going through almost it's going through two filters really. So you see that that isn't changing. And now you can see if I type in a word, it only updates um, each time a new word is added. Um, also, you'll notice with uh, spaces now, none of the bottom row update. And it's only when I start putting in new words that they both do. Um, so what else? I guess, uh, so that's it. If you have any ideas on how to improve it, or feel free to submit pull requests. I'm gonna put it up on the GitHub uh, 